Good afternoon to you, ladies and gentlemen. Dick Mason and Lindsay Gaze reporting from the Dowling Street Basketball Stadium in Launceston, Tasmania, Casino City, for the final of the National League for 1980. St Kilda, the St Kilda Pumas wearing the black, opposed to the West Adelaide Bearcats. Referee Ed Crouch throws the ball up, and they're away. Ball with a tip. This is Steve Breeny. Starting in the guard position for St Kilda, number 13. Danny Morsu with the ball, looking for Singstock underneath and the first turnover of the game. West Adelaide in a man-to-man -man defense. St Kilda in a man-to-man -man defense to start the game. Number nine, Ray Wood with the ball for West Adelaide, Ken Richardson. Danny Morsu matching up on Ken Richardson. That's an important matchup. Richardson goes under on Morsu. Yeah. And West Adelaide have the lead. Kilda and West Adelaide finished on level terms in the National League this year at the end of the roster season. They were 17 wins and five losses each. St Kilda finished on top on percentage. Tony Barnett levels the scores. Tony Barnett. That's a good one for Tony to get uh, his first basket in. He's a confidence player and that'll help him. And so in the, uh, the playoff system, it was one versus four. Sangstock, big rebound there. Two versus three, and in the one versus four, that was St Kilda versus Nana Wadding. St Kilda beat Nana Wadding on Saturday night, 101 to 77, and uh, West Adelaide won last night. Sangstock finds the hole against the Brisbane Bullets, 101 to 94. In the playoff, the third, which preceded today's game, Brisbane beat Nana Wadding, 91 to 79. So it's St Kilda leading four points to two. West Adelaide have the ball. Ken Richardson. Both teams are playing very intensively defensively in the first uh, moments of this game. Steve Breeny. Steve Breeny. Hasn't affected the shooting. Steve Breeny. Everyone's hot. Yes, I guess, Lindsay, everybody would be pumped up for this one. That's right, the adrenaline's running on this game. This is the climax of a very great season of national basketball competition. There's been nothing separating many teams, and uh, the result of the positions in the finals was not known until the last minute. Danny Morso a great try all the way down the middle. And Super we'll, solo effort. And he'll get the bonus uh, free throw. He was fouled on the way up. And the Saints are running. Well, that's their game. They're, uh, they're not normally noted for a defensive team, but in the first few moments here, you can obviously see that they want to uh, change that reputation. They're very tight. They're concerned about Ken Richardson. They want to deny him. In the games they've played during the season, they've worked on Richardson, but Rick Hodges has been the man that's uh, saved West Adelaide. So far, Richardson is getting free. There's Hodges. Gets the inside position. That's his game. Rick Hodges opens his account. Steve Breeny with the ball, being hassled up by number 11, Trevor Matterfoot for West Adelaide. Here's Rocky, Rocky Smith. Smith. Had a lot of physical pressure there from Ray Wood, but got the shot away all right. Ray Wood had a hand in his face, but didn't make any difference. Switching defensive assignments there. Peter Ally, Olympic uh, player. Whistle on the play, There's and a foul. foul off the ball. Rick Hodges picks up the foul. He was trying to fight for that inside position again on Larry Sengstock, but Larry held his ground. So we got a bit anxious and got a push and foul. You saw the score, 11 points to six, with St Kilda wearing the dark uniforms. Leading at the moment. This is Rocky Smith, top scorer in the NBL and most valuable player, Danny Morsu. Sengstock the rebound. And puts rebound. it back up again. In second effort, Steve Brini. Sengstock hey. tapping away. Foul call holding on the play there. Rocky Smith picks up the foul. 11 points to six still. Referees for this game are Ed Crouch and John Holden. Both men with a lot of international experience. To Richardson underneath. Some good defense there. And Richardson picks up the foul when he tried to retrieve the position and grab the ball back. It was a very fine pass. It was, uh, it was on the button, but the defense was up to the task. Ken Richardson, anxiously there, got a holding foul. Morsu on a drive. Goes one on one with Richardson. Oh, 
Manaford. Great. Well, he was under pressure all the way there, had hardly any room at all to move. Went on it. Very strong drive. That was to match Danny Mosso. Long pass There's to Manaford. Manaford again. The break. Good effort. Full court pressure by West Adelaide here. Raymond Wood having the job of matching up with Rocky Smith. Giving away a few inches there, but maybe a little bit of quickness. Singstock. Knocks it away, and the Bearcats will get it back. And there's a foul in all that. Ed Crouch picks up the foul from behind and says Singstock got over the top of Hodges and committed the foul. Three fouls to two. West Adelaide having made the three fouls so far. 13 points to 10. It's St Kilda in front. Peter Ally with the ball. Hodges finds He's the in. way in there. Smith. Wood will have to do a superior job on uh, Smith to keep him out of the game. Morsu. Hodges, the good rebound and fine outlet pass. At West Adelaide running quickly. Singstock, a standing rebound. There's a long pass. Very long pass. Barnett couldn't get there in time. Saw Tony Barnett, Steve Breeny was free. Also, it might have been a slightly easier pass, could have had a better result. Kilder about to make the first change. Ken Burbridge about to come on. Morsu kicked it out of bounds. West Adelaide gets it back. It's 13 points to 12. 14 minutes and 49 seconds to play in the first half. The final of the National League for 1980. Over the top to Ally. And a holding foul there. Called against Larry Singstock, I fancy. Yes. Here comes Burbridge into the game, reporting to referee John Holden. And he replaces Steve Freeney. Richardson, Matterford, Freeney, uh, Bur Burbridge pushes him, but not before he travelled. And so West Adelaide turned the ball over to uh, St Kilda. Burbridge. Same stock. Fighting for room to move. Good tip. Good tip. Good strong second effort there by Larry Sengstock. Maybe that's his best play. He's getting the ball there. Throw it up on the board and go and chase the second one. So far, Rocky Smith, who's averaged 33 points in the National League, hasn't seen much of the ball. That's Richardson. <laughs> Kilda leading by the odd point, 15 to 14. 14 minutes to play in the first half. Danny Morso with another one from the outside. That's three in a row he's tried from there, unsuccessfully. Manaford with the ball inside the Hodges. Well, tapped away by Singstock. Good hands. Well, I guess if we get a, a repeat of the final we had last year between St Kilda and the Canberra Cannons, it'll be a rip-roarer. Well, we're on the way to that already, Dick. There's, uh, there's nothing in this game. Both teams are playing with uh, a very strong tempo, aggressive defense. And uh, as the scores indicate, there's very little separating them. I can see Larry Sengstock uh, picking up two fouls early in the game. Could be a bit serious for St Kilda because he's really their key rebounder. Uh, Danny Morso, of course, can compete on the boards. And they've got Mike Slusher to come into the game. But the real animal work for St Kilda on the boards is done by Larry Sengstock, and he can't afford to foul. At the other end, Rick Hodges is a little bit more subtle. He just works to get that inside position and gets a lot of second shots. So uh, uh, that's going to present problems because uh, that's exactly where Larry Sengstock can pick up some fouls. Hodges, number 14, the big tall man for West Adelaide. And uh, just if we can cast our minds back uh, 12 months when St Kilda won the title, it was won by one point over the Canberra Cannons with a shot uh, back over the head layup shot with four seconds to play. Here's Smith on the break. Get it back. Well, that was nose-to-nose -nose defense by Raymond Wood. A fine job there. 
West Adelaide have started off at a 77 field goal percentage clip as compared Larry to St Kilda's 50. Larry inside again. Strong move. West Adelaide shooting 77% and St Kilda 50% from the floor. The rebounds uh, favour St Kilda 9 to 7. And the turnovers are pretty even. Wood Reject. rejected by Shane Singstock. Here's Smith. Ray Wood stay, stay with him again. Burbridge. Doing a fine job. Peter Ally holding him with the knee, says Ed Crouch. So Ally picks up the foul. Rocky Smith is deceptively fast down the floor. And uh, for, the, for Raymond Wood to stay with him on that drive there was a very good effort. Obviously, that's going to be Ray Wood's major assignment and West Adelaide's major assignment. Morsu lets one go. Ally has trouble controlling it. Eddie Crouch says Ken Burbridge helped him uh, get rid of it over the line. Yes. I think so much uh, depends on Ray Wood, the pressure he can put on Rocky Smith. And keep, if he can keep Smith out of the game, or keep him down at 20 points. West Adelaide have got a real chance. Matterford from the corner. Danny Morso. Singstock knocked it out of bounds. So the score is 17 to 14 in favour of St Kilda Pumas. 12 and a half minutes to play. Hodges and Singstock battle it out, and Morsu grabs the rebound. Smith. Barnett. Hodges there to grab the big rebound. Really burst himself down court. Ally. Ally. Seng stopped the rebound. Had the inside position on Richardson. Then. Smith underneath. Again, West Adelaide favoured by the out of bounds call. Still a three-point differential with 12 minutes to play in the first half. St Kilda, 17. West Adelaide, 14. Ken Richardson. St Kilda in man-to-man. -man. Hodges working a long way from the hoop, but making his way down the line. Matterford. Seeing stock. Well, he's seeing stock. Boards. Easy Good recovery, Wood. By, Good recovery there by Matterford to flip the ball over to Raymond Wood. Gave him an easy basket. Larry Sengstock working almost alone on the basket, the rebound. Smith. He is not having the best of luck so far. Hodges leads the Hodges. charge. West and Adelaide hit the front. South Australians in front. Bearcats 18, leading the Pumas 17. Barnett. Ally doing a job on him. Ball spills off Barnett's foot. This is Morsu. Got one. Well, uh, Ken Richardson playing fairly softly on Danny Morso there, conceding the outside shot, preferring that to a Danny Morso drive. On that occasion, Morso was able to hit from the outside. Foul call on Morso. Holding foul, says Ed Crouch. Into the game comes Mike Slusher for. Uh, and Kilda replacing Norsu. Slusher, the veteran, number five. Uh, Slusher is more likely to be working on the inside. Trying to put more pressure on Ken Richardson. Matterford gets clear. Nice fine shot. The South Australians have the lead again by one point. 20 to 19. This is Rocky Smith. He's Got in. inside his man. He's in. That's tough. Uh, Raymond Wood needed a little bit of help there that uh, Smith was able to take his man down the point and just work on one-on-one. -on -one. Smith's going to beat most players on that basis. Wood controlling the offense. Ally at the top. Wood from the corner. Smith jumping at him, but it didn't make any difference. Fine touch shot by Ray Wood. 22 to 21 to score. Ten minutes to play. The game nearly one quarter over. Slusher. Barnett back inside the slusher. Slusher's inside. Works on his man Pushed inside. His a little bit there. Barnett on a long one. Yes. Richardson. 
Oh, good feed by Hodges. That's great basketball. Larry Sengstuff was forced to help out there because uh, Richardson can't be left one-on-one -on -one either. Richardson was quick to see the open man, and Hodges finished it for him. Seng stock. Trying hard to dump it to the same play down the other end there. Uh, Sengstock was trying to draw the open man. Slusher didn't get open. When these two teams played in Melbourne a couple of weeks ago, it was West Adelaide by two points. Hodges uh, gets the chance. Ally. Rebound. It should be half a point to Rick Hodges there. He didn't get the line by pushing the ball up on the board again, the second effort. Burbridge has the shot. It's tough to play defense when you're lying on the ground. <laughs> well, he, uh, someone spat on his cue that time and uh, slipped over there. It's fairly hard to recover from that situation. Ally for the Bearcats. Ken Richardson, Richardson alone. That's not Flash his it. game. He's better inside. Smith. Soft hands. Slusher. Slusher. Uh, Trevor Matterford came clear right across the other side of the court to help Smith there. Leaving Burbridge alone on the weak side, but uh, Rocky Smith had just enough pressure on him to avoid seeing the cross-court pass. Well, Slash to save the day with a rebound. There's a timeout and substitution. Ken Richardson, second, the Ken Richardson picks up the foul, the which is score. his second. And the score is 26 to 25 with West Adelaide leading. Eight minutes, 23 seconds to play in the first half. There's the board, the time in uh, the gold colours and the seconds, uh, the minutes in, in uh, at the top, seconds underneath. That gives you all the information really you need to know about the game, the state of the game statistically at the moment. Lindsay Gay's to talk about the, the way it's going so far. Well, uh, I'm surprised a little bit that West Adelaide is trying to run so much with St Kilda. They're more noted for a controlled offence. They've got an excellent pattern offence. And uh, I thought that they'd be getting St Kilda a little bit more trouble with their offence. But they've elected to run with them. And uh, the job that Raymond Wood's been doing on Rocky Smith is really the deciding factor at this stage. If he can keep it going, this is going to go all the way down to the wire. More Sue back in the game. Seeing Stock taking a rest. St Kilda shooting 46% from the field. West Adelaide still running at a high clip at 59%. The rebounds, West Adelaide have nine and St Kilda have 13. The turnovers are six by St Kilda and five by West Adelaide. West Adelaide shooting the better, and that's the help. Oh, Rick Hodges. Well, that was a typical example of West Adelaide's half offense. It gives them a chance to get the open man. But uh, Rick Hodges missed that wide open layup there. And in turn, Ken Burbage lost the fast break opportunity as well. Wood throws it up from anywhere. Hello, in inside position. Good rebound, second Hello. shot. Burbage running. Dumped it to Slusher inside. Good feed. Wood to Richardson. One point the difference. Builder in front. Just well, a little uh, confrontation with the floor there. I don't know who's picking up that uh, foul. That was a foul on Danny Morseau. He got caught in a crossover step by Ken Richardson, and Danny Morseau was slightly out of position, reached a little bit, and then reaching. He also uh, got himself off balance and was caught for holding Ken Richards on that drive. That's Steve Breeny coming into the game for St Kilda. He's replacing Tony Barnett. Breeny, an uh, Olympic selection this, uh, this year. And has been called Australia's underrated basketball player. Still, I guess if you make the Olympic team, you're not all that underrated. But I he... don't think anyone underrates him anymore, Dick. Hodges. Slasher got a hand there. By golly, West Adelaide have got the world's most excited spectator, a man uh, standing under the basket at the far end from where we are. It's just uh, You can see him there by uh, referee John Hall. He is the world's most... He's going to have a heart attack before the day's over, I'll tell you that. <laughs> he is getting so excited. Rick Hodges, three to make two. One to make one. If he does, the scores will be level. He did no good. And they are from three. 
West Adelaide get it back again with Danny Morso just being forced to knock the ball out of bounds under the basket. Rick Hodges. Hodges. <laughs> Rick Hodges is uh, probably one of the greatest exponents of getting three or four shots in a row. He goes up on that first one. It's like the other one he missed there, but he keeps at it, keeps at it. That was probably the best thing he could have done because he's drawn a three-point play out of it. He made that one. Good value. And West Adelaide has the lead by two points, 31 to 29. Morsu playing with Richardson. Not the strong shot. Ally grabs the rebound. Matterford running past Burbridge. The old behind-the-back trick. Picked off by Brini. Morsu. Ray Wood, small man, big rebound. Open. Good. Sunder. A critical basket. Burbridge. Burbridge. Well, so far, Ray Wood has done an enormous job of keeping uh, Rocky Smith pretty quiet. Well, it's Smith's there. only got four points out of uh, St Kilda's 31. I think it's also significant, though, that uh, St Kilda's scoring rate, nevertheless, has not been diminished. Five and a half minutes to play in the first half, the National League final. Peter Ally. Good screen there, got Peter Ally free. Greeny. Good hands, Peter Ally. Anticipated that bounce pass. Yes, Trevor, you were standing on the line there, and they pinched you for it. Bad luck there, there was no pressure. Slusher. Slusher inside. West Adelaide had all the big men rebounding. Matterford. Ally. Back to Matterford. Over to Ray Wood. Inside to Ally. Does the roll. And gets the foul for the push. Once again, West Adelaide to able to work their offense to produce a high percentage shot. But Peter Ally just rolled that one around the rim and in frustration is called for another pushing foul. Number six coming into the game is Joe Teal for uh, West Adelaide. And St Kilda making two changes with Tony Barnett and Larry Singstock coming back in. So it's uh, timeout now, and here comes the score on the time to play. Four minutes, 54 seconds, and two more each, and they'll be level. Well, I think uh, St Kilda has the advantage in this game being able to substitute fairly frequently without any loss of power. West Adelaide are not so well blessed with their depth and they've made their first substitution now with Joe Thiel coming into the game. They're going to depend on having a lot better control with their offence through the second half. There's no questioning the fact that uh, Raymond Wood has done an outstanding job on Rocky Smith to this stage and it remains to be seen whether we'll be able to keep up the pressure for the rest of the game because Rocky Smith only needs to have a couple of minutes and he'll kill you. At the moment, uh, West Adelaide starting to uh, come back to the field a little bit with their shooting. They're now at 55%. St Kilda at 50%. They've uh, managed to pump theirs up a little bit. The rebounds are 14 by West Adelaide and 15 by St Kilda as Smith lets one go. He could be on that destructive trail right now. West Adelaide have turned it over 10 times and St Kilda have made eight mistakes. Incidentally, the scores are being uh, handled by Keith Dixon and the stats by Brian Waldron and Brian Walker today. Five-second held ball as Joe Teal couldn't find anybody free. It's John Holden, Olympic referee. Oof, pardon me, Mr. Smith. Lovely Smith intercepting the Tony Barnett layup. That's Ball played by Rocky Smith there to uh, intercept that tip as Teal obviously was going to win the tip. Four-point break to St Kilda. Ken Richardson a long way out. 
Didn't matter. One was about 18 feet away from the hoop when he let it go, but it hit the bottom of the net. Slusher. Barnett, another long bomb. Slusher gets one hand there, which he does very often. Well, I've been trying to analyze uh, West Adelaide's defense since that time out. It looked as though they were in a zone, but uh, just on that last play, when you only have two passes, it's pretty hard to analyze the defense too much, but uh, it looked like a box and one, with uh, Raymond Wood staying on... Not charged, Lucky foul, Smith. not paid. Just out of bounds. That's justice. Ben Richardson lucky to get away with that one. Singstock, Smith, nice reverse. Somebody got a hand on the ball. Oh, Singstock, big rebound. He's still at it. Bit of alloy. Smith, Good pass by Burbridge, under pressure. Good pass by Burbridge, under pressure. And Smith was also under as much pressure. Terry Ashton, the bench coach for West Adelaide. Barney Barnett. Ben Richardson picks up number three. Ben Richardson that, is the uh, playing coach of West Adelaide, and Terry Ashton looks after them on the bench. That may well have been a valuable foul there. Tony Barnett had no one in front of him and was going to be a clear layup. Maybe fairly significant in the long run, too, as Smith, Smith lets one way go. Out. Oops. <laughs> Wood to Thiel. Ally inside to Hodges. Stingstock sands his ground. Slusher gets a hand on it again. Stingstock. Slusher. Burbridge. Back to Slusher. Her rash. Joe Thiel came in there and said, that's enough of that there, Ian. It wasn't, it wasn't a very soft <laughs> attempt to knock the ball away, was it? But, uh, that's how it stands at the moment on the board. 2.27 to play. And St Kilda leading by four with these free throws to come. <laughs> court pressure by St Kilda. Interesting that they've got Smith back in the, uh, the far end. Hodges. Knocks Smith over. Smith will pick up the foul because he was he still was moving forward. Lucky Smith was moving forward into that. He was trying to con a uh, charge and foul, but it wasn't on. These referees have seen that uh, sort of thing before. Substitution as Thiel comes out. And uh, Brini also comes back into the game for some Kilda, replacing Rocky Smith. That's an interesting substitution. So Rocky Smith at the moment uh, has 10 points and three fouls. Hodges. He keeps getting those shots. Two to go. They need them here. That gap starting to look a little ominous. Same stock off somebody's hands. Long pass to Burbridge. <laughs> Trevor Matterford did the job. By Terry Matterford. It looked like a no-hope situation, but he kept at it. Saved the basket. And then gave away the foul. So often happens. The guy uh, does a really good job on defense, and then uh, just a little over-enthusiasm gets himself into trouble. That's only the first foul he's picked up. And it finds Singstock in the low post. Outside. A whistle on the play. Ray Wood will pick up the foul. The basket has gone in, but the foul was away from the ball. Ten team fouls committed by West Adelaide. So with two minutes and two seconds to play, St Kilda is in the bonus free throw situation, having a little trouble inbounding the ball, but it's Matterford who does the job. Two teams like to run with it whenever they can get the chance. I'm just taking Sengstock away from the post and going back behind him. Burbridge saved the basket. 
and that's not a bad bet. Uh, the way uh, the way his uh, foul shooting has been going so far is uh, what would he be? He's shooting about 50% from the line, is he? Oops, a daisy, Rick. Actually, he's uh, two out of seven at the moment. Would you believe two out of eight? It's not a real soft touch from the line. Rick's usually a little bit better from the line than this. So it's not a bad foul by uh, Burbridge. Three out of nine, so he's shooting 33%. Well, it's better that he fouled than uh, Larry Sengstock because he was coming over the top of Burbridge uh, to try to intercept the pass as well for the shot. May well have been Sengstock to get the foul. They don't want that. Sengstock moves his way inside and misses the layup. Richardson, good play, right strong rebound. Pass. Good pass. Slusher on the low post to Barnett. A little bit of pushing and shoving there. Mr. Hodges and Mr. Sengstock not uh, terrifically friendly. Wood. Good hands by Tony Barnett then. Steve Breeny. And Running up and down now. Ray Wood. Robert Matterford. Hodges. Sengstock picks up the foul. Well, I'd, uh, I'd like to see that one again. That On that uh, cross-court pass to Rick Hodges, seemed like he was getting his footwork a bit mixed up there. <laughs> in fact, he fumbled just long enough for, uh, for Larry Sengstock to come in and make that uh, foul. That's the state of play. 48 seconds to go and a four-point break to St Kilda. Rick Hodges at the line. Currently shooting 33%, three out of nine. Which means he's been to the line three times and hit one out of every uh, time he's been there. Well, we'll see what happens this time. Well... I wonder, I, if it's, like it. I wonder if it's a case of persistence pays off or he's got well, enough he's getting, practice. He's getting <laughs> enough practice, that's for sure. There we go. So it's two points the difference, and St Kilda leading with 40 seconds to play in the first half. And I think it's going to be a bit of a nail-biter, this one. Singstock, strong. Greeny. Steve Greeny. Gets Great those... Recovery. Has a habit and a knack of getting those garbage rebounds. Still must be the best garbage man in the business. He uh, he was just about on his backside there, groping for the ball, and uh, had uh, tremendous balance to recover and just slip that one back in. It was a valuable basket. And it gives St Kilda a four-point break with 28 seconds to play. Two boys in their Launceston Casino City uh, T-shirts and towels doing a super job. Mopping up the perspiration because uh, perspiration it might be, but on a basketball court, that's dynamite. You just cannot hold traction with the footwear when the floor is wet. And there's another one there. And that's... Uh, you might think it's a menial task, and I guess it is, but it's a very, very important job. You better have that floor nice and dry. Especially when these big guys are pounding up and down there. They fall from a great height. Peter Ally. No, he didn't travel. The whistle didn't blow. Ray Wood. Hodges. Richardson back into Hodges. Good offense. Good pattern offense. Good screen. Tony Barnett. Right around. Drop in. Half time. That's not the fire brigade, folks. That's half time. And at the half, Kilda leading by four points. 47 to 43. Keith Dixon will give me the, uh, the business here, and we'll see who shot all the points. For St Kilda, their top man is uh, Rocky Smith, who has 10. Larry Sengstock has eight. Danny Morsoul has nine. And Tony Barnett has eight. For West Adelaide, Rick Hodges has 17 points. So he's the high man on the court with 17. Ken Richardson has eight. 
Peter Ally has six, Ray Wood has six, and Trevor Madiford has six. So apart from Hodges, the Bearcats have shared it around a little. Balanced out, yes. And uh, St Kilda certainly have shared it around. You got a 10, 9, 8, uh, another 8, and uh, 6. So uh, that's the way it's gone around. And right at the moment, uh, we're seeing the National League presentations uh, being made. Scorer, Rocky Smith, St Kilda Saints. The man handing out the trophies is the president of the Australian Basketball Federation, Dr. John well, Rashke. Will comprise the Oval Centre All-Star team, Cal Stamp and Buchanan's. The All-Star team being introduced, Cal Stamp. Herb McEachin, Canberra Cannons. Another man from the National Capital, Herb McEachin. Danny Morseau, St Kilda Saints. Danny Marceau is one of the uh, forwards on the team. Brian Banks, Brisbane Bullets, uh, were the winners of the playoff for third and fourth position. Ken Richardson, the West Adelaide Bearcats. Ken Richards, playing coach of the West Adelaide Bearcats, setting another good example today. Monsters Casino City, Ian Davies. Very popular choice down here in Tasmania. Ian Davies, outstanding athlete. First Tasmanian to ever make an Olympic basketball team. Final trophy is the Sydney Sapphire and Opal Centre, most valuable player in the league award. The winner, Rocky Smith, St Kilda Saints. Rocky Smith, not only the leading scorer in the NBL, but also voted the most valuable player. And who's uh, coach of the year, Thank Barry Bass. Much. Congratulations on your award, Barry. I know it was thoroughly deserved. Uh, just a little history, if I may. You're a former national player and uh, one of the uh, you know, one of Victoria's all-time star scrappy guards, if I can use that uh, term. And that's the way Nunna Wadding play their basketball. What was the history of the club uh, this year from last? Well, we've lost a lot of players. We've had a turnover of a lot of players from last year. We've lost five players at the very before the season got underway. And they were fairly important uh, keys in last year's team, if I remember correctly. Well, unfortunately, they were all forwards. <laughs> you know, so they're all six foot five upwards. To our biggest player that we lost was six foot eight, George Wilson, who went back home to the United States, uh, which did hurt us. But we've got such a program at Nutter Wadding uh, with juniors. You know, we've got probably 250 junior teams in our area. So. We've been fortunate we'll be able to draw on them and they've uh, they've responded you know they've responded to uh as you said the scrappy style of basketball you know getting up the court uh we we start our defense from the other end we the other team's got to work hard to get the ball to their basket well i noticed today and i've noticed in the games i've seen you play that you just press all the time yes well you know we've spent a lot of time on our fitness we've uh you know i've gone out and seek, seek advice from other coaches of other sports uh you know, athletic coaches and some football coaches. And uh, you know, Barry Richardson has helped us out a lot mm -hmm. with motivation and uh, and uh, it's, it's, it's paid off, it has. How do you motivate uh, basically a basically young team? I know you've got Bill Palmer who's got tremendous experience and Gary Fox who's uh, an experienced player. But after that, it's uh, you know, basically, I guess, 18, 19. Well, I try to teach them that they've got to believe in themselves. Uh, you know, most of the players, as I said, have been very lucky. They're pretty, they've been pretty well coached in the junior ranks. And uh, when they come up, they, their enthusiasm sort of to play at this standard of basketball uh, is encouraging. You know, we've got a lot of under-12 little guys all want to be senior specters, and that's terrific. You know, that's, uh, that's, I think, that's the, at the moment where basketball is. You know, basketball is uh, it's starting with a younger group, and it's, it's a great game. You know, it's just going ahead in leaps and bounds. What do you think the difference is in basketball from the time when you played uh, back in the early 60s uh, as a member of the national team and uh, the, the game now? Well, again, I think the players are starting younger. Uh, there is more coaching and better coaching than, than we had at those times. And, uh, and as, as a race, we're getting bigger. We are getting bigger. You know, you've got some of the younger players out there now you know, they're 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and you know, they're only 17, 18 year olds. Are you know? feeding them better? Well, I think we must be. We must be doing something right, because they're getting bigger. They are. Now, Barry, talking about the junior program, how important is it that uh, we try and concentrate on the taller boys? Do you, do you favour concentration on the taller men rather than the, rather than the smaller guys? No, well, I, you know, I, no, I wouldn't say I 
you know, you'd prefer to have uh, bigger players. But no, I don't concentrate on whatever comes along. If he's talented and he's small, uh, because you, you see my side today, I got I got two of the smallest players in the competition, right. and they can still play. But again, they've got to be prepared to put out a lot of endeavour. Uh, and again, I'm very lucky because the players I've got do put out a lot of endeavour. I just wonder what your coaching philosophy is, because as I said at the start, you were a rather small guard even in those days, and a real hustler, a real scrapper around the court. Uh, does that in, has that uh, style of game that you played influenced your coaching strategy at all? Yes, yeah, so well, that, that was the way that I played. That's the game that I know best. So I find it not difficult to teach. You know, I like to, uh, well, I don't, I'm pretty simple. I don't want to get too confusing. And I just want to I teach what I know best. And that was well, that was what I was taught. Uh, you know, I keep trying to update. But, uh, but that, yeah, as I said, that's the way that I play. And that's the way that I, I, I try to coach my teams to play. Barry, who do you, just as a quick final answer, who do you fancy in the final? It's half time. I think St Kilda's overall ability, they've got a lot of very, very good players. I think St Kilda in the long run will, uh, will take it out. Thanks very much, Barry. And once again, congratulations on your award. Thoroughly deserved Coach of the Year. Thank you very much. Thank Barry Barnes. Now back to Lindsay Gaze in our central commentary position. Yes, thank you, Dick. Uh, Barry is a very much a deserving recipient of the Coach of the Year award. Before the season started, there was no one giving Nutterwadding any chance at all of uh, reaching... Uh, the finals or even winning games they've lost so many players and I think uh, Barry is probably being a little bit modest about the way he approaches coaching because uh, he set a great example and his players are ready to die out there on the floor for him and uh, certainly a very worthy recipient of the coach of the year award in this game here I probably have to support Barry's uh, opinion about uh, the eventual winner of this the final of the National League a lot is going to depend on uh, the shooting ability of St Kilda and of course Rocky Smith I remember talking to uh, another former Pacific 8 conference player, uh, Casey Jones, who's come to Australia and used to play against Rocky Smith when he was playing at Oregon State University. And he said he was the toughest player he's ever had to guard because you could do a great job on him for 15 minutes a half and think you've got the job done, but suddenly he's free and he gets 10 points. Same thing happened, happened in the second half and he finished with 20 points. And this is pretty much a typical example of today's game where Raymond Wood has had an outstanding job and uh, Rocky Smith, Smith still has 10 points at half time. Uh, when they played their match in the final game of the season last week, which West Adelaide won, Rocky Smith took charge in the second half and he was able to uh, almost rescue the game after St Kilda had looked out of it. And uh, now it remains to be seen whether, one, Raymond Wood can uh, continue the good job he's done on him or whether Smith can take charge again. Not forgetting the fact that Danny Morseau has still got a lot to contribute, and uh, Larry Senstock with his rebounding, he has to stay in the game and avoid fouls. Rick Hodges, the leader for West Adelaide, he picks up those cheap baskets inside and has a tendency to draw fouls. So we have a very exciting finish, ready to go for the second half. Smith, incidentally, shooting 45% from the floor, and the shooting percentages for the first half of both teams, St Kilda shooting 48%, West Adelaide shooting 53%. Sengstock wins the tap. West Adelaide turned it over 14 times. Danny Morso. Got to boost his confidence. Gives him a good lead to start the second half. Both teams equal in rebounds in the first half with 20 each. Offensive rebounds favouring St Kilda 8-6. That'll be Steve... No, I thought that was going to be Steve Breeny's foul. Steve but just leaning a little bit there, but not enough to cause any great problems. More Danny soon. Morso. Yes. Right around, dropped in again. That's an important break. Seven points, the biggest break in the game so far to St Kilda. Many a basketball game has been uh, won by the team which took charge very early in the second half. Peter Allard. Peter Allard. Nice, steady shot there from the 15 foot mark. Oh, it's too long. Danny get... also had several chances to pass the ball in there, but a little bit too much pressure by West Adelaide. You only get five seconds to pass it in. Ken Richardson, Adelaide captain coach, former St Kilda player. Good hands by Morso. Almost saved it. Stepped on the white line. That's the white one in amongst the myriad of lines here at this multi-purpose uh, facility, Dowling Street, Launceston. Hodges against the bottom side of the ring. Richardson on the floor, Ray Wood. Hodges, travel. Three seconds. Well, 
a little bit of both. Didn't matter, they turned the ball over to St Kilda. Smith. Barnett. Into Danny Moss. Getting clear. Rocky Smith. Oh my goodness, that was some very poor defensive work by Rocky Smith. He just allowed Raymond Wood to drive over there without any defense at all. And of course, Raymond Wood's a much better player than that. He'll finish it for you. Sing stop. Larry Sing stop. 55 to 47. point margin starting to assume big proportions for West Adelaide. Those next couple of minutes are very, very important for West Adelaide. They can't afford St Kilda to open up any more gap. Look, Hodges. <laughs> just caught Larry Sengstock playing behind and he's just able to lean in, make a simple layup. Smith. Rocky Smith. Danny Morso. That one rolled around and came out. Adderford on the break. Rocky Smith picks up the foul. And that's not such a bad penalty because uh, it could have been more so. No, that's, that is a real bad penalty because that's Rick, Rocky Smith's fourth foul. I was going for Larry Sengstock. I thought it was Larry Sengstock that was doing the hacking. I thought so. Or whichever well, one got now the foul. there's pressure i mean rocky smith's defense is a bit suspect at the best of times but now on four fouls he's going to need a lot of help because raymond wood can take him to the basket and he's good enough to hit the 15 foot perimeter shot as well their ally missing uh, two of those three same stop Behind Morso's screen. Does it Great all? Well, that's the way to follow your shot in the basket, isn't it? Good soft shot, rolled around the ring, but uh, Larry Sengstock charged the board. Defensive adjustment. A little switch there that Rocky Smith now guarding through the matter. Good pass. Speed. Good pass, Peter Allen. Found Kendrick is inside. Morso. Seven point break. West Adelaide hanging on. Smith back on Raymond Wood. Ally looking for Hodges. Straight up and down. Morsu knocks it out of court. So had no chance of getting it. Lend on him a little bit. So the matter for that one. Now Rick Hodges got the foul. So Rick Hodges picks up number two. Five point lead by St Kilda. All dressed up and nowhere to go. Shingstock. He's in. Oh. Barnett arriving there. Just, just a half a count too late. Had the right intention, just needed a little bit more. 15 minutes and 38 seconds to play. West Adelaide with the ball, training 54-59. Richardson. That's, that's bread and butter for West Adelaide. They're running that play successfully almost every time down the floor. Gives Ken Richardson a real cheap layup. Oh, 
Danny Morseau. New complexion on the game, 15 minutes to play. West Adelaide weathered the storm there. Looks as though it's getting a bit serious as they got seven or eight points down, but they've come back with a couple of good baskets. Good control offense. Smith. Smith inside. I don't really think that's his go in the low post. Well, it might have been if he'd been left alone, but uh, Cam Richardson gave good defensive help there. Got a hand to it. Was able to save what would have been a certain basket. And it was Adelaide running. Hit the front. Trevor Manaford kicks up the foul. West Adelaide is in front. Timeout call by Brian Curl. So Curl will need to take stock. And the slasher will be making Danny Morso. Ken Burbridge re enters the court. Ken Burbridge coming uh, into the game. Mike Slusher also. And. Uh, that's the situation. 14 minutes, 10 seconds to play, and the South Australians are in front by one point. Well, clearly the difference in those last couple of minutes was the fact that West Adelaide was able to come down and get into a, a very organised pattern offence, and they were picking up some cheap baskets with Rick Hodges and Ken Richards getting free from point-blank range, and that's a good range from which to shoot. Meanwhile, down the other end, the Danny Morso was, uh, was ready to take shots from the perimeter. They were losing passes and they lost a couple of uh, opportunities there that may well have kept their advantage, but now West Adelaide's on top and St Kilda's got the job ahead of them. West Adelaide's shooting percentage has improved to 57%, while St Kilda's remains at 50%. That's good shooting from both teams. Smith for Sengstock. Got it back on the hand after Slusher. So... It's back to uh, the Pumas. Hodges. Oh, very casual, Rocky Smith. <laughs> Could have jumped up and had the rebound, but elected to stay on the floor. West Adelaide showing much more determination there. That should have been St Kilda's ball, but uh, West Adelaide fighting hard. Got it back again. Strong Manifold. drive. Strong drive. Well, that's what uh, Rocky Smith wanted to do on the previous play. Take his man inside, get the ball and operate one-on-one, -on -one, but there was no defensive help that time. So Raymond Wood foul, it could be a three-point play. And Smith uh, has the chance, he's got the two already. One shot left. Yes. Some kill to go back to a two-point lead. Just over 13 minutes to play. with the ball controlling uh, matters at the moment Hodges in the high post now he passed down low and cut to the basket oh. Smith steals it it's all over wow <laughs> no one even bothered to chase that one Smith really exploded down the court that time he had half the court to himself by the time he got to the basket and I think he'd read what Hodges had, had been doing passing to Richardson and going down low and he was just uh, waiting there in the bushes like an ambush Larry Sengstock, good interception as well. A couple of important breaks there for St Kilda. So important when the ball's on the run. Oh, wow, did they really want that did one? They want that? Larry Sengstock wasn't going to have any second thoughts. Rocky Smith was already there. It almost looked like a rugby scrum that time. The ball was on the floor and everybody, <laughs> I mean everybody, wanted it. With the result that it's a held ball and... Uh, well, Rocky Smith was there first. That's why Larry Sengstock's not in the tip. Larry Sengstock was just making sure that there was no one else going to get it. That's no harm, because Smith will win this tap. 
Larry Sengstop. Sasha Watch inside. It. Yes. On Matterford. Great effort. Tony Barnett had him covered, but uh, Matterford was just too quick. Points by Rocky Smith. He gets in the air. It's gone in the hole. No score. Ed Crouch has cancelled the basket. Oh. Mm. Well, I'm sure West Adelaide would accept that. There's trouble. Incidentally, uh, that's as uh, Ray Wood leaves the court with his fifth foul. As Lindsay said, that's trouble. Manifold has done a great job. He's put in seven of 11 shots. Right. <laughs> Ray Wood's uh, contribution, Keith, was eight points offensively, which was around, he was shooting around 50%. And, uh, but it was the defensive job that he'd done, which was so vital to West well, Adelaide's effort. I think that shows you how smart Smith is, that the last two times down the floor, he's taken uh, Raymond Wood one-on-one -on -one there, and he's had almost no alternative but to foul, but that's got him out of the game. And now what? Boyd. Rocky Smith with a long one from the outside. So they say in the classics, that could be all she wrote. Jeff Shadle is the new man on. There he is with the ball now. Well, St Kilda's gone into a zone. I don't know how long it'll take him to do that. West Adelaide getting good value from the man-to-man -man offense. See what they can do against the zone. Hodges just... still rebounds. Larry Sengstock. Long pass. Tony Barnett. In. All of a sudden, it's eight points again. 72 to 64 with 11 minutes to play. Richardson to Hodges. Good pass. Low shot. I just should have made that. Some Barnett. running again. Barnett again. Alone. Too tall for Shadell there. He can take him down inside, turn around and shoot it without any troubles. West Adelaide have got some serious problems now. That's a good break for St Kilda. They have to analyse his defence. Uh -oh. Another one. Burbridge for the layup. Well, I can't blame Peter Allard there. It looked like he was open. That was a good pass, except the defense was smart. Got an interception. 12 points. That's a big lead now in such a game that's been nothing separated them all the way. Suddenly, St Kilda 12 up. Richardson. No space there. Squeezed for Another me. interception. Good pass. Whoa. Goal tending. Ball was almost in the hole when Peter Ally rejected it. But you can't do that there here. Now it's uh, West Adelaide's turn to call a timeout. So with 10 minutes and one second to play in the National League final, here comes the score. 14-point break to St Kilda. How quickly it can turn around when you recall that West Adelaide led 60 to 59. And that was only a couple of minutes ago. You bet. The, uh, I think it's uh, excellent tactics by Brian Curl here to, uh, to get into a zone defense at this stage of the game. West Adelaide were getting very good value from the man-to-man -man defense, uh, which was against them, or the man-to-man -man offense. And uh, uh, Rick Hodges, Ken Richardson were getting open. Terry, uh, Trevor Matterford was uh, driving, and everything was going for them. Suddenly, a couple of interceptions. Raymond Wood being forced out of the game on fouls with a couple of uh, moves by Rocky Smith. And the game's been turned around instantly. It'll now be a test of West Adelaide's endurance to see if they can recover the situation. Interestingly, the uh, shooting percentages are now both at 54%. Uh, both teams shooting 54%. St Kilda have made 36 of their 67. Well, uh, St Kilda's back in a man-to-man. -man. They're working it again. Oh, oh. Oh, I had a little bit of a charge. Yeah. Yes, he couldn't get away with that. It was right under the referee's nose. He hooked him with his arm and then pushed a little bit. Clearly a foul. The rebounds are 29 in favour of St Kilda and 25 by West Adelaide. West Adelaide have lost the ball 19 times to St Kilda's 11 on turnovers. And thereby hangs a tail. 
Rocky Smith one on one. Slusher. Slusher with a rebound. His own, his own defense after a score looks like the tactics. 1-3-1 one, one zone by the look of it as well. Throw it anyway. Smith. Wow. Did Matterford grab him by the arm or did he grab him by the arm? I think it almost looked like an inversion, didn't it? Uh, Rocky Smith's legs went coming flailing right in front of him. And uh, I was ready to see a big smash there, but uh, he was able to recover. And that was just a desperation foul. Rocky Smith was on his way for a layup. He makes three for two here. Smith, the most valuable player in the National League and leading point scorer in the competition this year. Averaged 33 points per game. Isn't it amazing with such a, uh, an outstanding shooter goes to the line and has difficulty making free throws. Got one. 17 points. That's a massive lead at this stage of the game. And a little bit of pressure. Out of bounds. Ooh, yes. Referee John Holden pointed the wrong way that time. His, uh, Shader was out of bounds when he caught the ball. Barnett, Ally closed the gap and gets the foul. Barnett was on his way to the hoop. Eight minutes, 51 seconds to play. It's 81 to 64. Interception, Ken Richardson. This is a dunk. No. Ken Burbage. A little bit of pressure there. Kilda with the ball and leading 81 66. Larry Sandstop muscling man, good move. A little, little pump fake there that uh, sent Rick Hodges up in the air. Gave Larry Sandstop an easy layup. Rick Hodges. Find the big man underneath. Hodges threw 33 points in the. Slasher. Game. Last night's game to get the Bearcats into the final. Hodges threw 33 points. Right at the moment, uh, he has 23. Hodges again. Ally. Off balance, good but good shot. Smith. Well, Rocky Smith under control there. He's uh, putting on a bit of act, holding his hand, almost looking sheepishly there. <laughs> Peter Ally picks up number five. So Ally leaves the game. His contribution offensively, 11 points. Five in the second half. Timeout called. Leading point scorer in the game is Rick Hodges with 23. Then St Kilda have really shared it around. Mosu has 17, Sengstock has 16, and Smith has 18. Also Barnett in double figures with 14. So they've done a really good job, those four men sharing it around. There's the score, a 15-point break to St Kilda with seven and a half plus minutes to play. In this type of game, under normal circumstances, you could say that uh, the result is far from being decided because uh, when both teams are playing a running game, high-scoring match, 15 points is not all that much. However, for West Adelaide, things are looking much more seriously because they've lost two of their key players in Raymond Wood and Peter Alloy. They're not blessed with that much depth. We said earlier that St Kilda were uh, much more fortunate in that regard. They can keep substituting freely. And now as uh, West Adelaide go to the bench and uh, trailing by 15 points, it would take a superhuman effort for them to recover in this match. Actually, St Kilda have uh, gone to the lead in the field goal percentage uh, department. They're now shooting 55% to West Adelaide's 54. This is Joe Teal back in. That's good shooting by both teams. Uh, although West Adelaide are trailing, high percentage shooting. It's an outstanding effort by both teams. Smith. West Adelaide have gone into a zone. Very tight zone at that. Barnett loves to shoot from there. 
Oh, a little square. Huh? Good yeah, hands by Smith. Well, Slusher. Well, that's what happens when the brakes are going against you. It was a good defense. They were able to get the interception. Fast break opportunity clearly on. But then St. Kula was save, saved it by intercepting that outlet pass. Matter for again. <laughs> Got a hand there, did Larry Singstock. Notice the way I was very intrigued by the way that as Matterford bounced the ball and uh, started to go up for his shot, he managed to just uh, keep the defensive player away. Just a fraction with a little hand there and then float the little and... Floated in there and displayed the ball temporarily for a, a double pump, or what was to be a double pump layup, but got the foul on the way. Just under seven minutes to play in the National League final. And the score is 89 to 72. Some killer leading. West Adelaide with the ball. Trevor Matterford shooting. He's played a great game uh, for West Adelaide, for the Bearcats. He'll need the third one. Slightly errant pass from Sengstock, but Smith's pace enables him to get it back. West Adelaide in this zone. Sengstock. Smith! Smith. Oh. Was he airborne? So Teal, Smith, three on two as they run up the court. Man in the center, ball in the Burbridge. lane. Burbridge. Classic fast break formation. The ball in the middle and the two lanes filled. Like some sort of a 1 3 1 zone thrown up by St Kilda. Hodges. Back into Hodges. Sengstock out of the way and the ball in the hole. Well, some soft defense there by Larry Sengstock, but he doesn't want to draw any more fouls. He's sitting on four. So, so he's ready to concede that one to stay in the game. No serious problem. Smith. Matter that's flying the defense. Richardson will dunk it if he can get control of it. <laughs> These teams have played twice during the season for one uh, win each. St Kilda won the game in Adelaide and West Adelaide won the game in Melbourne. We're heading for a century score here by St Kilda with uh, still five and a quarter minutes to play. They have 95 points to 78. That vital break came around about the 12-minute uh, uh, mark. Hodges is resting on the rim, folks. Slusher, good hands. Barnett, back to Slusher. Slusher. Richardson. Richardson. 17-point break by St Kilda. Four and a half minutes to play, and the National League final very close to being decided. Burbridge. Hodges rebound. Matterford on the break. The drive. Oh. Why did that miss? Well, Teal knocked it out. He got a finger on it and knocked it off the rim. There's a foul there, whistled by John Holden. And a foul call. Rick Hodges picks it up. Larry Sengstock gasping for breath will be replaced by Danny Morseau. Larry Sengstock is an outstanding effort. Danny Morseau rebounding strongly all the way through. Offensive threat. He's done it all today. Sengstock has 16 points. Eight in both. Oh, eight in each half or either half or whichever you like. Smith. Baseline drive oh. and shot. Pardon me. He makes it look so easy. A great player. Ken Richardson. Barnett rebound and throw on the air. Three on one. More so. An exhibition now. Over the 100 goes St Kilda. 101 to 80. Somebody was saying, I think uh, Bruce Johnson from St Kilda was saying that they'd win by 25. He could be right. Matterford. Three and a half minutes to play.
Just Adelaide being called on by Terry Ashton to get up a chase. Smith gets clear. <laughs> How many is that, Keith? 26 points by Smith. Oh, goodness. 26 points. Number seven is Peter Dore, son of the Australian uh, Olympic assistant coach. Teal. Done him also with a foul for pushing. Didn't need a foul, I don't think, because uh, Teal was not particularly well balanced, but uh, Danny Morso chasing after it. Picks up a foul. And it's, uh, St Kilda ready to clear their bench. Yes, Gary Favreau, Gary Favreau, Favreau coming, coming in. on. And the tall man number seven coming into the game is Billy Bill McGee. McGee. And also number 11 standing on the far side of the key is Dean Templeton. Fair Danny Morso had a brief uh, reappearance to the game. Trevor Matterford also going out for West Adelaide, giving Greg Mills a run. So it's just under three minutes to play, and 103 plays 82 as Joe Teal takes the free throws. We call this skin time. All the skins come off the bench. That is, uh, when you're practicing, you play shirts and skins. So now the skins are into the game pretty well throughout. Game's virtually decided. And that's what happens in spin time. Smith. Favaro. Slusher. Slusher. Cool. You look after it. Slusher. Goes strongly to the hoop for a veteran. Strong player. He's done a really good, fine job. Greg Mules with the ball. Hodges. Surrounded by the hordes of the enemy. Door. Teal. A little short there. Hodges does it well. Templeton very slack underneath the basket. Didn't jump for the rebound. Favreau loses it to the grabby hands of Greg Mules. But Mules picks up the foul. Two minutes. Three seconds remaining in the National League final. And St Kilda are going to repeat as National League champions. There's Rocky Smith. This is the last one see of in Australia. Very much an outstanding ovation from the crowd here for a super effort. Rocky Smith will be returning to the United States next week and uh, where he'll be trying out for a professional role with the Portland Trailblazers. He uh, goes into the camp, the NBA camp. From what he's done in Australia, we'd think he'd have a pretty fair chance of making it. 26 points. He shot 11 out of 19 from the field. And it's a basket by Bill yeah. McGee. 107 to 86. Hodges. High post. Door. Door. Seal. Shot knocked away by Templeton. Many bodies. Favreau. Nowhere to go. Templeton got a bit of a push. Yes, I think that was the least they could do for him. Yeah. <laughs> that was the least they could do. You get that much of a hand, you can get his back. Templeton. Dean Templeton. <laughs> Played in the National League for Nana Wadding last year for the Spectres. And, uh, crossed over. Hodges. Lots of hands there. And number seven, Billy McGee, picks up the foul. <laughs> Mike Slusher was ready to complain there because uh, he was sharing in that uh, little piece of contact. Yes, that was uh, uh, really the, uh, wood, the woodcutter <laughs> in the forest there. <laughs> the branches sort of fell on him a little heavily. Now, who did you have? John Holden and Ed Crouch have decided to hold the game up just momentarily. Uh, some fairly vital decisions going on here now. Yes, I think uh, they decide, I guess... John and Ed have decided that uh, what's going to happen is if they get it over too quickly, the beer's going to be warm, <laughs> and so they'll just let it cool off for a little while. Well, what, what they're figuring on is whether it's a foul each way that um, Rick Hodge is making his move in there. Yes, that's what's so happening. each way. Foul each way there. So we'll cancel that out and have a jump ball. Now, Ken Richardson wants to debate it, but uh, there is no debate. Hodges looks around. He could win the jump. Anybody will get that one. Favreau to Temple. Temple. Oh, right hand. Oh, oh. Oh, bad luck. 
bad luck. Just, uh, just a tremendous effort to intercept there and just lost his footing on the floor and stumbled out of bounds. Slusher on the low post finds Templeton. Has Templeton. the shot. Mm. Richardson's rebound. Takes it in the middle. Door. All right, Peter Door. I think I might have mentioned earlier, Peter Door, the son of Alan Door, the Olympic team's assistant coach. With me this afternoon, giving the special comments, is the real coach. No, I don't mean that uh, in any uh, derogatory way to Alan, but Lindsay Gaze, who is the uh, head coach of the Australian Olympic team. 29 seconds to play. And it's all over by the shouting here at Darling Street Stadium in Launceston. It could Last be another one. Gary Favreau. Favreau double handling. Should have been. Double That's handling of the ball. Doesn't matter at this stage. And I think John Holden and Ed Crouch have done a very good job in this game. Well controlled final. Another break. Favreau again. Oops. Lost it again. Two seconds to play and it's all over. Kilda 113 to West Adelaide 88. 113 to 88. And to sum up while we get some statistics, uh, well, but before you do sum up, Lindsay, let's have a look at the point scorers. For the winners from Kilda, Rocky Smith threw 26 points. Next, Danny Morso's 19, and then not necessarily in order. We had uh, Mike Slusher with 18. Larry Singstock with 16, uh, Barnett, uh, Tony Barnett with 14, and then uh, a few of the other boys chipped in. Ken Burbridge had eight, Steve Breeny had six, <laughs> Dean Templeton two, Gary Favreau two, Bill McGee two, and uh, well, everybody got on the board. That's right. And for West Adelaide, they were of course best served by Rick Hodges with 27. Next best was Ken Richardson with 20. He did a quiet but a very effective job. Trevor Manford, a super game on offense with 18 points. Peter Ally, 11. And then, let's see, we had uh, Joe Teal with a couple. Peter Dorr with two. Peter Ally with 11. Ray Wood with eight. And a superb defensive game for about uh, 30 minutes or so until he ran out of fouls. And uh, really, while Wood was in the game, there, there was contest. every chance. It there was contest. every chance. It was right. a super defensive effort by, uh, by Ray Wood. And the final shooting statistics were St Kilda 55%, West Adelaide 51%. St Kilda made 51 of their 92 field goals or attempts, and West Adelaide made 38 of their 74. The turnovers, St Kilda turned it over 17 times, and West Adelaide turned it over 28 times. So that's uh, there's a lot of turnovers, 45 uh, turnovers in the game, a lot of mistakes. And the rebounds were 34 by St Kilda and 31 by West Adelaide. The offensive rebounds were St Kilda's 15 to 11. The defensive rebounds were West Adelaide's 20 to 19. Well, the statistics really tell the story, Dick. Uh, West, uh, St Kilda was stronger on the boards, had more depth and ultimately more talent. That uh, whilst uh, Raymond Wood was able to do a job on Rocky Smith, well, it was a contest. But then with Rocky Smith being pretty smart, took him inside, got a couple of fouls there, got him out of the game and that was pretty much all she wrote that uh, uh, St Kilda were able to expand a, a narrow lead quickly to 12 points and from then on with West Adelaide having to try and play a catch-up game that uh, it wasn't their game they were more concerned about running a controlled deliberate offense to uh, work on the high percentage but uh, St Kilda were then able to change into a zone defense and uh, once uh, Wood and uh, Peter Allo were out of the game on fouls well, it was, became a procession, but uh, St Kilda's better depth, better control, and more offensive score power was uh, the result of their great victory. I, th I think it would be wrong to overlook the influence that Mike Slusher had on that game. His shooting percentage, his power on the boards, combined with Larry Sengstock, was a very significant factor. We, we tend to give too much uh, credit for Rocky Smith in controlling the game, but uh, inside, with both Larry Sengstock and Mike Slusher doing a great job, it was too much for Rick Hodges on his own. Although for a while he was able to get uh, support from Peter Ally, but uh, he was out of the game early in the second half and St Kilda's better depth and strength was the deciding factor overall. So let's just repeat the final score for you. St Kilda 113, 
defeated West Adelaide 88. The championship trophy being handed over by Dr. John Rashke, the president of the Australian Basketball Federation, to the St Kilda Puma team uh, coach First Brian all, Curl and he's now introducing his team. Three Olympic players. Uh, first of all, the captain of the team, Steve Breeny. <laughs> Danny Morsu. <laughs> Larry Sensock. Available for the Olympic team this year because of his uh, continuing studies. Outstanding contribution to the game here in Australia. In Burbridge now getting his medal. Dean Templeton having received his. Gary Favreau. I think they might be leaving Rocky Smith to last. Well, that's fair enough, I think. That, yes, uh, indeed. Billy McGee. Very special performance. Well, all these boys going up to get a medal actually got on the scoreboard. Everyone in the St Kilda team oh, through points. That's Mike's first championship in Australian basketball since he's been here, people. Oh. And last but not least, I think, you know, I think he's uh, done a lot for basketball throughout Australia. I know he's done a lot for our club. And uh, in a way, I hope he makes the pros of the Portland Trailblazers in a way. I hope they're looking for a 6'9 guard, and I refer to Rocky Smith. And on that note, we wind it up here from Launceston, just repeating the final score. St Kilda Pumas, 113, defeated the West Adelaide Bearcats, 88, and in the playoff for third, Brisbane, 91, defeated Nunawading, 79. Keith Dixon kept the scores for us. Brian Waldron and Brian Walker kept the statistics. Lindsay Gaze was my special commentator this afternoon. And this is Dick Mason signing off from the Dowling Street Basketball Stadium in Launceston for ABC Sport and handing you back to Norman May in the presentation studio in Sydney.